Okay, everybody. Um, this is a continuance from the previous video. I found that article and everything. It's by this guy. He lives in Stockton, and I. It's J. E. Jeremiah. I guess I don't know if that's how he spells his name. Or, anyway, it's at A. L. T. and then Market. dot com. Well, here it is. You can hopefully you can see this for, forward slash forum forward slash safe haven. Just look up strategic relocation strategic now I got it strategic relocation Missouri and then you want to look for ALT markets or alternative market and then uh, you want to go once you pull up Missouri you want to go to the second page and then here it is it says the strategy of survival in relation to geography history and natural resources the Ozark Plateau as compared to the Swiss National Plateau Besides the population base, which the Ozark Plateau is capable of sustaining as compared to the entire nation of Switzerland. They talk about Switzerland because Switzerland also has a uh, plateau. Agricultural. And then that's all. Here it is. And then here's the Swiss Plateau. And the January 1st, those have inventory of all cattle and calves in Missouri totaled 4.45 million head, 3 million hogs, 70 sheep, and 20. Equine. It says eight. Now, how can that be done? Eight states. Well, it talks about the figures and stuff. Now, how can that be done? Eight states border Missouri, and as people relocate, some will bring livestock and farming supplies. The current livestock population can be vastly increased, and I actually went last year. My dad got a, uh, was working, and he actually got somebody hit him on a roller, and luckily he survived because a week later, somebody else got hit on a roller and did not survive. But uh, he got a big, pretty good size uh, chunk of money back, and we got invited to go camping in a, a state park called Palm de Terre. It's I think it's P O M M E D E T E R R E, and uh, it's way it's over there by Springfield, north of Springfield. And uh, when we was when we got over there and everything, we went to go look at a. Uh, it just so happened that my dad wanted to buy a Batco, and he did. And the guy that we went to go look at it lived, or was, you know, in the next town over. I forgot what town it was, but it was past, uh, past uh, the Truman State Park over there and everything. And, and in traveling over there and up there, when everywhere you look, all there is is grassland. You know, here it is, June, July, we're supposed to be having a drought, and then all you see is grassland. And hardly ever did I see any cows or horses. I mean, I see a bunch of fence, bench, a bunch of big expensive pipe fencing, you know, just for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles, which looked like it cost probably over millions of dollars, you know what I mean? And here they, you know, Angus Farms out there, but no cattle. So I don't know if they just own thousands of acres out out there and or what's going on. But I mean, I know that's how it is in certain states too. You'll go and you'll see for thousands of miles and miles and miles. But one of the things that he talks about is uh, as far as relocation is he talks about how the Ozark Plateau we have a bunch of springs. Some of the biggest uh, springs there is in. And uh, I think the whole United States, or even maybe the whole world, or at least maybe the whole, you know, you know, United States, or something like that, and how you know you can use this to irrigate it, and there's a bunch of springs, and but I would definitely read this. And there's a lot of things that he talks about that is true. You know, I actually live in the Ellsworth type region. And we have a couple of springs around here. I know of quite a few of them right off the bat, you know what I mean, that I could easily go to. We actually have well water, and the way it's set up, we could easily get water out of the well if we had to manually, you know. But that's another thing, too, you know. Is It's just, I don't know, 
maybe it's just me, but the way everything's going and everything, it just it does it, it seems like a pretty good idea to uh, you know just get away from the government and cut all contracts and you know be independent and you know have have your own livestock and everything if you can you know not only is it cheaper but you know in the end it might be the difference between life and death for your family but everybody's different and you know it may be that the Lord you know lets this country go down and for some reason or not or you know we don't know but just a thought guys anyway let's see, let's see let's continue on and then he talks about survivalist mindset and here he talks about either you know do you want to survive or do you want to be a sur survivalist you know and then he gives some articles about surviving and here he talks about the uh, redoubt states versus the Ozarks refugium. The phraseology and concept of the redoubt state seems to be based on the plans of two men, Chuck Baldwin and James Wesley Rawls, both of whom perhaps fancied themselves as leaders of the survivalist movement. Joel Skalskin rates up there as well, imagining that he has the sense to advise people on where to move in order to gamble their lives in his ill-thought-out advice as well, but he at least disagrees with their poorly and very late in the game thought-out plans for thousands of the followers. Unfortunately, the decision to use the terminology readout states may well prove to be ionic and deadly accurate. It means a small and usually temporary enclosed defense work. A redoubt, historically redoubt, is a fort or fort system usually consisting of an enclosed defense emplacement outside a larger fort. It is meant to protect soldiers outside the main defense line and can be a permanent structure or a hatchly constructed temporary fortification. Well, Harry, well, he just talks about how, you know, well, self-explanatory, I just talked about it. Then he gives the more on scows in. says he has respect for Rawls and his work to get people prepared for whatever may happen like martial law or the fall of the dollar it says his American redoubt states all includes all of Idaho, Montana, Wyoming and the eastern parts of Oregon and Washington he envisions this area as a focus point of collecting fellow patriots who want to survive and forging them into a biblically sound and constitutionally mined silver local currency that will give it unity. These five states he selects happen to be also highly rated in in my book on strategic relocation, though I expand this selection to include Utah and Western Colorado as well. Keep it as that within series coming up with some important factors. I have consulted with people for forty years and most just can't pick up and leave where they live and relocate to one of these seven states in the far west. Does this mean no one else survives the Major wars and social unrest that are looming on the horizon, not at all. He talks about different people's views and the coming collapse and just different stuff. I would highly recommend reassessing any ideas about these redoubt states. They have the number of states about right, but the location is totally wrong. In a sense, they would be seen as such a, by misled battlers of the Baldwins of the world, but they will in reality turn out to be front line war zones as Russians, Chinese, many peoples with the poor into the, our country from the west coast and across Canada. West coast, these never each other. We. So they're basically saying everybody, you know, 
especially those of you who are in the Free State Project and in New Hampshire, probably not a good place to be. Canon is not a good place to be too, apparently. It says, learn Russian and Chinese and pack heavy weapons should you decide to head to any of these states. I mean, one guy, Joel Scousen, will charge you to counsel you on relocation and even has a book on it. Looking at the table of contents and areas he has recommended, the book is not worth much more than use as a very general evaluation guide on a tactical level only. This is no strategy involved. So this guy is looking at it as, as far as surviving and, you know, well, I'll just keep going. And you guys can read all of this and look at what he says and... I read into it, and I thought, man, he's, I think he's right, you know. Anyway, what do I propose instead of the readout states? A, I propose a far more stable, safe, powerful, and wealthy region, and I would use the term ref, referum. Referum, Latin, the meaning of the word referum, uh, I don't, I'm don't. i pretty sure that I'm pronouncing that word right, is refuge or hideaway, in some cases known as wellness area or relaxation or recovering. That was the then the, the see that was the then that was the them of the 2008 Ozark our community Congress the all those who love and care about the Ozarks are invited to together to join which can celebrate appreciate and learn from this phenomenal plant from a part of the earth and each other our theme this year lifeboat Ozarks it's really nice in Missouri guys I really don't think you understand how really nice it is you know like I said. And I'm not trying to build the state up or say that, you know, those other states are better or not. But our springs, and we get four seasons. And uh, uh, we have all kinds of, like I said, we have all kinds of woods around here. Um, my, as of right now, my dealings with the local corporate policy enforcers are, you know, really not that bad. We actually even had a shootout with our neighbors and called them, I think, at least three or four times, and it took them two hours to get there from, and they're only like 20 minutes away. And then by the time we ended up, by t it was a uh, highway patrolman that ended up getting there, and then by the time the uh, other cop got there, he was finishing up and had to prints and everything. What had happened basically is this kid high on drugs had a gun, was shooting at uh, my cousins were walking to actually to get on the school bus school bus and he was shooting, shoot, shot, ended up shooting the dogs. One died and then one we took to the animal hospital and then it survived. But there was, ended up, there was shots on the back of the uh, trailer where he was shooting and everything and we had a lot of problems with that kid, you know, all throughout his life, we there was problems with those people. So, but that's really how it should be, you know. You, you know what I mean? Really, it's, you know, if only really time you should really. The cops, should, you know, it's just a little bit different down here, you know. Not to say that there's corruption and stuff happens, because there is, you know. Obviously, there's always going to be people who, you know. Are corrupted and everything, and that, you know, not to say like I said that there's bad cops and, but, you know, especially when out in the country, you know what I mean. Kind of everybody in those small towns, everybody knows everybody, or is related to somebody, or knows this one or that one. You know what I mean. So the, the cop, you know, the corporate policy enforces basically, you know what I mean. They pretty much let you deal with it yourself, and they're a little bit more lenient. You know what I mean. Other than like a big city and stuff, you know what I mean? I think one of the cities is one of the worst places somebody can live in. And if you can help it, you know, get out. But, you know, like I said, that's just my opinion. And if you love the city and everything, and that's fine. But might want to think about, you know, with everything happening and everything. Now they just had a meteor out and Russia and everything hit. So, you know, hard telling what's going to be happening. You would have thought that they would have said something about a meteor heading that way and told people, you know, but whether they knew about it or not, I don't know. But you think with all the technology, they would have, you know. Anyway, so let's keep on going. 
they, anyway, like I said, they have a bunch of parks. I think Missouri ranks number one with uh with uh parks as far as people you know voting the parks on there. And we have uh they they get an elk in here now in Missouri, and then they got uh, we got feral hogs too, and bears and snakes down south, and white-tailed deer, and so there's all kinds of cool, there's actually quite a bit of stuff to do and. I think we have, let's see, we have three major interstate highways, 70, which goes all the way, pretty much, I think, all the way to California, and then we have 55 that runs, I believe, all the way pretty much down to uh, Texas or something like that, or Louisiana, and then we have 44 that runs from, like, St. Louis all the way down to, uh, I think, Texas, too, so it's, you know, it's, it's pretty much right in the smack, Missouri's pretty much right smack dab in the middle of everything, you know. And then uh, Springfield is like the third largest city. And I don't know what the crime rate is or anything on it. but So you'd have to look into that. But, you know. Okay. I recommend this article, Chuck Mom America, and read out Tom. The guy who actually wrote this article, he says that he has been, he's a patriot, and he uh, says that he has read all kinds of patriot magazines, and he's went to all kinds of prophecy meetings and all this other stuff. He talks about it. And here's where it talks about Missouri and everything and what's going on and, you know, a little bit more of why. The golden age of Missouri agriculture. To survive, we, our children, and our grandchildren must gain, must again become patriot farmers. We must return to the land right now. This is no, there is no tomorrow. We can, we can, we must take back our country one farm at a time. We must tell the truth until it sinks in. Food and freedom are linked at this individual level. We must relearn how to independently feed ourselves. Sweet, honest, sweet, or we will perish. Sweat, honest, sweat, or we will perish. There is no other way to regain control of our future and, if necessary, be able to defend our political sovereignty. Crisis is imminent and coming on an unimaginable scale. Does anyone doubt this? It's just a matter of time. It's high time for conservative organi organizations to champion and fund in every way possible the farmer patriot role model. This is the best, last thing we have to do for ourselves. I'll turn it in for our and for and for their children. Galen Chadwick. I think this is the guy that uh, has all the websites and stuff. Let me look. Because he does have a website and stuff. And like I said, I thought I marked it, but I guess I didn't. Prior to World War I, Missouri was a diverse and abundant garden. Fruits, grains, nuts, vegetables, dairy products, shoes, and timber were produced in astonishing quantities. The growers re remained integrally bound to the expanding railroad through an elaborate network of westward branching links that reached into the margins of the Great Plains. These connected to the termite of Minneapolis, Chicago, Kansas City, which in turn linked to the Metropolitan centers of the East Coast, Missouri fed millions upon millions of people. Until 1914, farmers received party parity for their I can't uh, I'll have to look that word up for their products of their labor. There was a time when the people who grew our food made a decent living, could own their land, homes, and tools outright. In the words of one contemporary, it was a time when farmers and tradesmen made profits on their goods. We walked to town with our heads held high. Our children were happy. The government was on our side. We influenced the politics of our state. Remember these times? We could have them again. Dairy farm production in Missouri ranked among the top four states in the nation for many years. By the end of World War II, Missouri had as many as one million dairy cows, where we once exported up to 1.9 million pounds of milk products a year. We are now we now must import 1.7 million pounds just to feed ourselves. Webster County was once the leading county in apple production at a time when Missouri led the entire nation in the number of apple trees. 
The reasons for our decline are varied and span several generations, but by 1950 there were still some 60,000 orchards in Missouri with a population of over 3 million, almost 4 million people. Now the state of affairs is such that we have less than 1,000 orchards to supply an estimated population of 6.2 million. Now we air fright hard and tasteless fruit from Peru, Chile, Mexico, Brazil, Indonesia, and New Zealand, but we can do something about this. In 1899, even isolated Stone County produced 10,000 acres of wheat. Is anyone here from Stone County? The last figure submitted in 1985 was wheat production of 100 acres. At 100 acres, the once overflowing grain elevators on Chestnut Expressway and those that once towered above towns all over the Ozarks no longer represent American prosperity, but mock it. Achieve the restoration goal to maintain we became a proud and independent people. If we do so, retaining our Second Amendment rights will count for something. The Constitution of the United States will remain historically meaningful if and only if we the people can feed again feed ourselves. The conservative answer mobilize a coordinated and comprehensive restoration of our regional food supply system. Restoration must be by and for the people of the Missouri Ozarks region. This this way we'll have a resilient economy, one that can stand on our own when hard times come. However, we eventually define sustainable, call it what you will. It must be based on the foundation of food security. We must be able to feed ourselves indefinitely, right? If we can't feed ourselves, think again. Never heard of the golden age of Missouri agriculture? Of the happiest, most prosperous, and peaceful generation in our history, now a hundred years in the rearview mirror, when many ordinary farmers had maids and housekeepers? There was full employment, craftsmanship, mutual respect, prosperity such as we've never seen before or since. Never hear of this? Think a teacher. I said all states have farmers, Kansas farmers fed 129 people, and you, Iowa girls, corn, etc. Then the dumbness, dumbness of my statement hit me. Galeen has had university people sh slip, slip him info on Missouri's past saying, I will lose my job if they find out I did this. Missouri used to export everything to 360 degrees of the nation. It will again. We called his speech at the inauguration dinner of the Well-Fed Neighbor Alliance. That's what it's called. Well-Fed Neighbor Alliance. I think that's what his website is. Well-Fed Neighbor. Here it is. It's called Well-Fed Neighbor. That's what it is. So that's what you want to look for. Support everything to 360 degree of the nation. It will again. We can... We called his speech at the inauguration dinner of the Well-Fed Neighbor Alliance, the Golden Age of Missouri speech. If every single house, park, farm, and ranch in this country made the effort to produce food in a garden, vineyard, orchard, flock, herd, etc., and every builder in a manufacturing plant commit to producing affordable products needed locally, we would be well on our way back to the golden age of Missouri agriculture and production. The Ozark Plateau is the last basion of the family farm in America. There are 350,000 of, 350, of them certainly capable of feeding every person in the state and very likely many others as the influx of the millions of newly homeless families who suddenly realize that there is no other area of Missouri where they have a chance of surviving heads this way. What begins as a few drops will become a trickle and finally a torrential flood. Many of these in the tr transition movement already realize this, as do hundreds of believers across the state. The state, in addition, many other people are coming to grips with this inescapable fact. I have said this elsewhere, but it bears repeating: we have the opportunity, with the proven power inherent in this movement, to totally remake our local economy, to create a new life and environment for our families to live in and for our grandchildren to grow up in. Prior to World War I, Missouri was a diverse and abundant garden fruits. Da, da, da. Let's see, part of the, well, there it is again, Webster County, just repeating.
Only 2% of Americans now produce our food, but through the early 1900s, the typical farm was highly diversified. The average Missourian derived his or her income from the sale of eggs, fruit, hogs, mules, sheep, firewood, cream, beef, herbs, vegetables, and other products. During the years of higher grain production, corn was dominant, but wheat and oats were also major crops. These basic staples, combined with the tremendous advances in horticultural and science, social science and the demand for organic farming techniques, will form the backbone of a sustainable economy. It will take all of us working in a disciplined and coordinated way over the course of years to reach a semblance of the golden age of Missouri agricultural circa 1914. To succeed, we must possess a variation of businessmen, Christians, social activists, and environmentalists working together towards social justice. We consider all people as full partners in healing our planet. The results we seek are these. To ensure the local control of the food supply, raise the quality of life for growers, conserve land and agricultural production, de industrialize agriculture, reduce the chemical process content of food, oppose genetically modified food, plant nut and fruit sources in urban parks and public land, the creation of neighborhood self-reliance. Actually, going back to the plant nut and fruit sources, if you go to land, I think it's landandfarm.com, they have a, a listing on there for a uh, pecan farm. It's, uh, I think it's ready to buy with everything on there, and I think they do, so. I think it said so much money a year and so those of you who wanted to move to Missouri maybe wanted to look into this you know there's farms ready to go with you know everything the cows and everything ready to go you know what I mean and then so anyway restore justice and suspend it to the American ethos tell me your vision of the future and I'll tell you who and what you are being right now and we the people of Missouri can't independently feed ourselves no longer even know or care how not our line of work, not a problem. Get my got my paycheck and the box stores are full. Result we we mail about at the exit of the American history during this seven. Missing news from the mainstream media. No major American city has more than a two to three day supply of food. And the pipeline FEMA we are as dependent upon foreign food as the foreign oil that hauls it. We did all this to ourselves. Storage Soros, da 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 da, still pursue. Oh. People complain masses as useless feeders. Stalinist leaders describe people as useless feeders. Fact is, our moral, mortal Emily is globalization. Since the Club of Rome globalization has specifically targeted our U.S. food supply now under U.N. control, since Bush Sr. signed Rio Biodiversity Treaty 1992, actually, I've actually heard that Bush was actually uh, born in uh, Germany and was actually a Nazi. Which really doesn't surprise me. Uh, Clinton's executive order of 1993 made it law containing outages of S510 Food Safety Act Codex Unlimitarius UN Agenda 21 are all part of the same cloth. Waking up starts at home. Sh show the future of food eating the world according to Monsanto dirt at the end of Siberia crass course fresh and fresh da, 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 da. Welfare Neighbor Alliance. Here's his webpage. There's the guy. 
uh, Springfield, Missouri. Thousand Gardens Projects. Springfield Sugaring. We have maple trees too, so you can get like maple uh, syrup and stuff here. And we, there's always, you can, I mean, there's quite a few uh, black walnut trees and pecan trees here. And you can order pecan trees and black walnut trees from the Missouri Conservation and all kinds of stuff. There's, you know, like I said, there's farms for sale that are ready to go. Food Police State Podcast. See, they actually... Well, by all the, everybody on here, it shows that they, uh... They keep, you know, this website staying... Staying up and going and everything. Okay. Well, it's, uh, 10.04, and it's Saturday evening, and... I'm tired and I'm going to go ahead and get off here but I thank you for watching my videos and uh, I hope that everybody consider maybe uh, moving to Missouri and helping out and growing crops and everything and I look hopefully this year Lord willing I want to invest in getting uh, I want to try to invest in getting uh, some stuff to grow stuff with and I have a friend that lives right up the road that is uh, also minded the same way I am as far as spending money on getting things that she can make money on and replenish and so I'm I think between her and me we're going to uh, invest and try to raise chickens and sell chickens and uh, eggs and I'd like to get some ducks for duck eggs and so we have some spare wood around here and there's actually there's quite a few uh, places where you can go to buy wood directly from the your the the person who cuts it down and uh, so and I just talked to a friend of mine that said that for like 10 bucks you could go and they you can get a bunch of spare boards and stuff that were nicked or cut are just whatever left over you know I guess and so I was gonna go and get some of that and try to make me some stuff for chickens and so I guess I'm gonna go ahead and get off here and if anybody has any more questions about the stuff that I looked into or Missouri or or anything you know please look look at all the uh, sites that I showed you and pray and let me know what you think. I'd like to hear from you. Thanks. Bye.